So um, I grew up in Wensleydale in a like sort of hippie village where there are either local farmers doing dairy and sheep or loads of incomers who were musicians and artists and one of them was a printmaker called Piers Brown and my parents were friends with him, he was very eccentric, he had a hunting lodge halfway up the, the moor but he was a, a really really good professional artist, painter and um, he offered to get me when I was 14 to come and print for, for him with him and learn, start to learn the trade in the proper old fashioned way and I, I, I was already been drawing since I could pick up a pencil um, but I went and stayed with Piers and his wife Charlotte and dad was quite something, lost him a couple of years ago, bless him uh, and he was a pianist, he's an accomplished guy um, mum still plays the recorder really well but it's that artistic thing, I've grown up in a very artistic house um, but that, that the music, um, so when I was eight I was living in an idyllic um, dale in Wensleydale in the 70s uh, mum and dad said one day well you're going off to, you want to go off to Durham, the cathedral and me and my twin brother we got all dressed up and we went off, we thought maybe it was a day trip um, five years later we returned um, as head choristers at Durham Cathedral and we'd sung, we didn't go home at Christmas or Easter, we just sang, so we're professional singers um, and that's how we paid for our private prep school education by singing and, and that's working every day um, in the Cathedral at Durham uh, living in the close uh, sort of, we were Harry Potters before Harry Potter cold showers in the basements and runs and rugby and that was on top of working really hard as professional choristers, we were professional singers. So we would go and practice for an hour uh, in the cathedral before breakfast every day, then have breakfast with the boarders who were normally paying mm. kids, and then do a whole day's lessons of French and Latin and all that stuff, uh, and then go over and do even songs, a sung even song every day. On Sundays it would be three services, singing, re like sight reading music, you know, really serious stuff. And then on important days, you'd be singing four services a day on the Sunday. Um, didn't go home at Christmas or Easter till the 28th, well, 28th of December, so we worked all the way through Christmas. So it was weird, and this is when it snowed. So uh, there were just 24 of us choristers and some of the staff stayed and we just had the run of this huge old school um, and we either played and made models and, and you know do what, did what kids do or we were working, we were singing in this massive Norman cathedral, I don't know if you've seen it but it's, it's called Half Church of God, Half Castle Against the, uh, against the Scot, that's how it's described, it's a, it's a fortress and, uh, and so that was quite a change so, so did all my music in five years, did records and TV and radio and then I was so, got quite good at it and then I'd had so much of it I never touched music again and just stepped straight into the art. Took that, that um, the things I'd learned and moved it into the art which I'd always been doing and uh, and I've stayed with the art ever since. But it's a similar, I mean you're, you're using creativity and inspiration to manifest artistic endeavor now we didn't we didn't go we didn't go down the uh public school route which was the expectation is you go from prep school to public school and my parents had moved down south by this point um down to hampshire so we ended up at a local comprehensive now let me tell you when you <laughs> when you turn up in lace-up shoes and parkers and national health glasses having been singing for five years at a normal comp from the north with a Durham accent and suddenly you're in Hampshire, um, uh, uh, in Wimborne actually, um, it, you're exotic creatures um, and it didn't go very well first day on the bus uh, and the local bully thought oh boy I'm gonna have a field day here um, but he hadn't, um, he hadn't reckoned on my twin brother Al who um, punched him straight in the nose and we never had any more trouble for three years at, at, um, at QE Comprehensive um, because it was dealt with on the spot. Um, so I'm very grateful to Al for that.
No expectations. I was, I was like in management from the age of 12, running other choristers, and suddenly age 13, I was just expected to be a kid again. Um, and I didn't really know how, what, there was so much time. There was nothing to, like, we, they got us BMXs and we just played and, and made mate, uh, friends and, and, you know, did the things that normal kids do. But I was used to, like, m you know, marshalling people in dress uniform daily to be somewhere at a certain time and do difficult things. Mm. And, uh, yeah, so, yeah. So I can't be late to this day for anything. I, I physically can't be late. I am inking up a plate. And this is actually a plate of where I come from, from the Dale, from Wensleydale. And we're up in a gill called Arn Gill. And it's, um, this is a steel plate which has been etched by me with wax and acid. And I'm rubbing oil paint in on this hot plate, this is hot. This is the hot, this is the ink. And this is thick as treacle. Okay. And when it hits the hot metal, it melts. And you can then rub it in to these tiny lines, a bit like engraving, but they're made with, et with acid, it's called etching. And um, this is how you, I make pictures. It's a little bit over the top, but it's a very old tradi traditional Italian way of printmaking called intaglio, which means intaglio, which means in the line, and it's the ink that sits in the etch line, which which is, which is the name of the process. Started off, they think, by arm by armourers. The story goes. I don't know if this is true, but the story goes that an. Um, an armourer was engraving a breastplate for a warlord, so he's cutting the metal out with a V-shaped tool to embellish the armour. And he spilt his lunch on his breastplate, which had vinegar in it, and it pitted and etched into the metal because it's an acid. And he found it and was you know, horrified or sacked or whatever. But somebody at a eureka moment went, hang on a minute, I don't need to cut metal anymore. I can just use wax and acid to just bite it can use liquid to do the same thing but more gently and then they started embellishing armour with etching and they embellished swords and anything because you've got to look good when you're out fighting and then at some point somebody thought do you know what I think we can do some art with that so you know Jura and Rembrandt were early etchers and um, their stuff still exists you know it's bomb proof no pun intended and and now you know it's it's an art form, but it's it's old. This is old school, um, and it's not really about how quickly you can do it. It's about um, what results you can get from it. That's Lake District. Um, Buttermere from High Style. We're on High Style, looking down on Buttermere. You, you apprentice with a master by printing their work and he had a large studio in Winsdale overlooking Askrig where we grew up. I was just completely wowed by the quality of his work. It, it wasn't about the past, He's a lands he was a landscapist. It was just, um, it was clearly to me just a really good way to make pictures because etching's old but it's still good um, um, so no it wasn't informed by oh I want to do historical stuff at all it was um, this is uh, this is a really good way to do it um, and it works and it's effective and it lasts you know it turns out people from the past were probably quite, quite clever I've been a professional artist since 1998, uh, showing nationally, really going for it. Um, meet my wife in India while I'm travelling. Uh, we we end up in we we come from London. She was city group lawyer, uh, but we ended up in Whitstable with the young boy Harry, our son. Um, and I'm working uh, uh, in Whitstable as an artist, and and um, and then the 2008 crash comes and uh, all the artistic
creative uh, genres take a massive dive almost instantly. I mean, two thirds of my income dropped dropped off a cliff within two weeks and ne- didn't recover. Um, uh, so I had to retrain, and so retrained as a staff nurse. Went to Canterbury Christchurch. I had to do something. I was a young kid. Um, suddenly, couldn't earn money as an artist. And uh, I'm. A couple of years later, I'm student nurse on placement in a um, and E ward um, uh, in Canterbury, and one of the doctors says, y- "You come here, busy, busy ward." And he says, well, "Why are your hands big? Why is your jaw jutting out?" And I went, "Oh, I've just done quite a lot of building work on houses, and you know, just got you know." And he went, "No," he said, "No," he said, "You've got acromegaly," and he said. Yeah, write it down, go and Google it, and then we're going to refer you to Kings in London immediately. And I was like, what? But I've been feeling tired for years. And it was a, it's a benign brain tumour in your pituitary gland, in your head. And uh, a week later I'm in London, because if you're in the NHS you get fast-tracked. Um, because people know everybody. So I'm in London, and then an op. I had a new, neurosurgery in 2011 and um, in remission now, but yeah, it's been an interesting one. Uh, Oil-based ink down onto this glass here, Rob. And this is part of the printing process. So this is to, to do a huge roller. So I'm just prepping now. It looks messy, but there is, there is method to it and this is part of the coloration of the print that that you're filming so you'll see what happens in a minute so now we're going to pick up this roller Start rolling. And lay paper over. This is just all prep for the printing. I'm taking ink off now because it's got too much on. And you'll see what I do with it in a minute. So that's fine. That's all ready now. This is how I've kept fit for a quarter of a century, using, using a huge roller. Right, that's ready now. Goes back on there. That's uh, and that'll be done. That'll be used in a bit. In fact, it can get used now. So I'll just move this over here. We don't need that anymore. With my blotting paper. Now this plate, which has these colours on, is going to have some more colour on. the roller used, it's done with. It's all part of the printmaking process. But now I'm gonna take, I'm gonna get the, the more, put more ink on now. And this is the process of printing. So it's, uh, it's not like pressing a button. A bit more to it than that. <laughs> this is a large plate. It's 
complex plate to print. There's lots of different things to do to make it read. And this is called Ottoman Gill. on now so what's this this is scrim this is a very fine mesh material I think upholsterers use it and it's perfect material you bunch it up like this and then you take your you take your ink so you take your printing ink and then you can this is how you apply the ink this is how it goes on. You don't paint it on, you rub it on, you rub it in. This is an intaglio process. And this is how it's applied by hand with different pressures. So it looks like I'm just scrubbing away, but there's different pressures going on all the time to get the ink in correctly. It, my master taught me it's called feeling the plate you you let the plate you've made tell you how to print it it tells you what it wants if you listen to it so now I've put it on I'm taking it off and you might think oh you're going to rub it all out but these lines, these etch lines, they're holding the ink intaglio. They're holding it in a V-shaped valley in there. Under a microscope, there's a V-shaped valley full of ink, printing ink. So I'm just taking it off the surface, really. Trying to create an illusion of distance. I've been inking up for about half an hour, right? That this is complex play, but we're going to print it in a minute, and I'm, um, which should provide some sort of decent eye candy, quite frankly. Um, I love printing, so this never gets boring for me ever. I just I love it. So I'm just finishing off. I'm looking at everything and wondering if. I've got everything ready to go. I think I have. I might just do a little bit more up here. Back about a bit more. Mm. I don't know. One more thing. ready to rock. I'm going to get paper. This paper is this acid free paper and it, it can't print when it's dry because the fibres, ha it has to be wet so the fibres relax. So it goes through the water and then you drip it off. And then we blot it. So we take it through here, lay it down on the blotting paper, and you take the water off. So what you're trying to do is turn it back into almost dry paper with a little bit of moisture. The 
because what happens is the fibers relax in the paper they become elastic and that enables them to get pushed into the etched lines that we've been talking about and pull the ink out and actually use your skin to take the paper, take the water away in the end push the water into the uh, blotting paper beneath the paper but also your skin absorbs it as well now if it's too wet it will repel the oil paint you see me rubbing into the metal and it won't print so this is now going to be printed and lay this down Just going to check I'm all set up. sort of almost like a buffer this top layer lambs wool blanket so we've got a pinch pressure of about three tons between two steel rollers which are clamped down and that's going to deliver a, a line of, of pressure and force the paper into the plate and give us our print. So now we're actually printing. And once you've started, you've got to keep going. An earthquake could happen and I'd still be running this through. Nice and steady. Etchings have been printed like this for 450 years. And now we see what we've got. Pull back the lamb's wool. Pull back the buffer paper. And here we have the print. We have the, the, the printed etching. But if I leave this, it will dry like a wavy sea. And that's no good because you can't get glass that does that. So you have to flatten it. So this is water-based gum strip. Absolutely brilliant stuff. And what you do is you go back to your water again. Out here. Wet it. And you stick this thing down. And it's the final process and it's absolutely crucial because you don't do it. All of your work will be for nothing. So this is where fingernails come in. And yeah, so do that four times round and and you get your, then it dries. And how long does it take to dry? Well, honestly, uh, you know, a couple of weeks really. Um, and then this will dry. But isn't it funny that the colors you see going on the plate, it looks really heavy. And then what comes out is actually quite it almost some people think it's um, pen and ink and watercolour. A lot of people think they're watercolours, but they're, it's actually oil paint punched into paper at three tons of pressure. Um, 